Hello everybody and welcome to Meet the Fritz Trainer. With me today, I'm very excited. It is Ruslan Ponomayov. Hello everyone. <laughs> Thanks for being here. So you're here in Hamburg and of course everybody knows what that means. You are recording a new Fritz Trainer. What is the Fritz Trainer about, please? Uh, well, I recorded some, yes, chess stuff in Chess Bay Studio. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would not go to some deep details to keep it a little bit like surprise, but I hope it will be interesting, educational, in the same in the same moment, entertaining. So be be patient. I, it should be something. Fun. <laughs> I'm I'm absolutely certain this will be the case. Now, from all your chess uh, experiences you've ever had, what was the most significant one? What was the thing which was like where you were the most energetic about which did you enjoy the most you mean chess activities well chess for me is i'm professional chess player i'm competitive chess player of course i always enjoy to win the games maybe for me it's more important result than the pass to this let's say i'm but it's the same i would I would say that chess, of course, kind of addiction already. Oh my goodness. And aspects that <laughs> even if I'm not playing chess, I still enjoy like uh, the possibilities that chess gives to me. Like, for example, travel to meet new people, see new cultures. I mean, great uh, things. Mm -hmm. You're wearing some, let's say, I mean, it looks pretty cool. But your glasses, they, they have like a little yellow glow. Tell me, why are you wearing those glasses? Is it just for your sight or does it have a special meaning? No, in general, if some people who knew me during the games, I never wear glasses. For exactly. reading, I also perfectly can, can read it. Just these glasses, I took it for recording courses. I take it like seriously to protect my eyes blue <laughs> screen. Maybe it's a little bit like publicity just, but I feel more comfortable to record okay. content with them. Will not do any extra publicity because this company don't pay me for promotion this glasses, but you can try yourself. <laughs> yeah. We want to know. I want to wear the glasses from Rosa Ponoma who sent me the and brand okay, and everything. <laughs> Maybe I would get excited. <laughs> about making contact, you know, everyone on Twitch, on YouTube has their special small remarks. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, let's keep like these that. glasses for me. Uh, totally, totally. It's all yours. Don't worry at all. But it's at least I'm sure it's not a cheating device, right? <laughs> you can check. <laughs> no, I don't trust you. I trust you. We, <laughs> well, we are not competing. We just have conversation. Well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you don't need cheating against me after all. <clears throat> Do you do anything else besides playing chess? Well, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I consider myself, despite like all this introduction, 2700, etc. Just normal uh, guy who <laughs> wants to have normal life. Mm -hmm. Well, somehow, once again, thanks to chess, I'm Ukrainian. This is, I guess, this sometimes when you ask, what are you doing? What's your superpower? I can ask you. I'm Ukraine. In the same moment, chess ah. and my personal life brought me to Spain, to Basque country. I have um, family, two kids, mm -hmm. small daughter who will celebrate soon. Two years, son, six years. So Congratulations. I, I didn't even know that. That's great. I don't know. I was trying to teach them a little bit something <sighs> that I know. Also a little bit of chess doing some sports like riding bicycle. I really enjoy, for example, in Hamburg, this culture, like people riding bicycle. You know, do some yoga, <laughs> reading books for relaxing, like maybe to wash dishes, to cook <laughs> something. Well, so you're doing just, everything. I would say just <laughs> normal, normal. The normal things. things. Normal things, just simple, as simple as possible. And I would, maybe say kind of lucky with chess that I have I can organize a little bit my routine mm -hmm. don't need like 
to go to the office each day. But actually, I like to wake up early. Uh, when... What time? Well, my kids uh, need to be at school nine thirty, but many times I can wake up at seven, seven thirty, to see uh, like the sun. <laughs> Just in the summer, it's very beautiful. In the winter, somehow the days much uh, shorter. Yeah, I well... feel more active. I I just take it as like a part of your life, like summer, uh, winter. Like you play white. <laughs> sometimes you play sometimes white. You sometimes play. you play black. Yes, Summer is do. definitely white, <laughs> and winter is black. Or <laughs> well, where I live in Basque country, uh, we live Basque coast. There is actually I miss a little bit like snow, like I had in Ukraine, in gotcha. Karpaty mountain. But if I had opportunity, maybe with even with the kids when they're a little bit older, grow grown up, maybe to teach them go for skiing actually sometimes like flying to munich and taking train to austria it's nice also can be nice plan. but from time to time of course i need to work and i would say chess is kind of uh work that i like and also mm-hmm. where i can achieve something as well of course but if i can learn some new things always is interesting like coming here pascal teaching me how you can do this this stuff so (laughs) before i was more like only thinking competitive but right now i don't mind you know like to share my your knowledge yes knowledge and i really uh, like to have some feedbacks from people Mm -hmm. when they uh, can suggest what they want to learn if if it was useful for them it's also brings some kind of joy <laughs> that you do something like something like things that looks not like the same like people do mm-hmm. uh, bread for example or milk that you eat but also maybe chess not as important like other things but still i think could be important not really if only for basic needs let's say for uh, eat and sleep <laughs> Well, yeah, some people probably have chess like a bread and milk and something to drink and to eat in their life too. Uh, But of course, we're very thankful that you're sharing your knowledge and your experience. You got plenty of that. Are you sharing this chess knowledge with your children too? Are you trying to teach them some chess or are you going like, it's okay if one person knows chess and (laughs) that'll be fine? I I try to spend, let's say, quality time with them, don't want to force them mm-hmm. uh, just to give more options, more possibilities. I My understand. son really likes also music, but sometimes he can see me like I'm with my computer, with chess base, <laughs> <or> with my <laughs> for solving some puzzles and he's asking me what will happen. To do this, <laughs> I don't know. We will, we will see. Personally, myself, I remember I was maybe seven years old. My father taught me how to play chess. At that moment, you were hooked. no, no existed uh, smartphones or True. anything. I was like reading books. So now it's a little bit different, but I try to be not so old-fashioned. Why not to use new technologies? So. I understand. Uh, when you read books, you don't only entirely read chess books, I assume. Do you read novels or something else? What's the last book you read? I actually, it is my main problem. It's also so much information, so many interesting mm. things. So if people recommend uh, something, I always like uh, curious about this. For example, I. Uh, follow it a little bit like blog of Noel Studer, uh, Swiss uh, chess player, and he, ah no Studer yes yes and he was talking about uh, important how to sleep and he mentioned oh. some books about why humans sleep or another world called Twenty One Tips how to sleep better. Mm-hmm. This is not about like no chess at all, but it was like interesting in general. 
and I recommend even if you are not chess player, like my wife, for example, she had some experience like translating some text mm-hmm. about chess, but she don't play chess at all. But even for her, I can see can be like useful to be more efficient, more productive. If you sleep better, you have uh, more energy and you are in the good mood, for example. Sometimes Igor Kavalenko, Ukrainian grandmaster, mm-hmm. now he's in military service mm. uh, fighting for Ukraine. And sometimes like he some also shares what books he was uh, reading, what was interesting for him, was what was not so interesting for him. For example, some book I remember he recommended about economy, just maybe basic but dif- basically different economical uh, theory like sometimes like nowadays politics like talking increase taxes or maybe uh, decrease taxes like the, <laughs> now we have the moments of huge inflation so mm-hmm. we check like what do federal reserve bank at the united states this kind of I know, book i kind of was curious like at least to understand by simple human words uh-huh. What's what's going on, for example? Yeah, yeah, I got you. So you're in general, you are just a very curious person, and you like to experience and learn new things, um, if possible, at all times. What was the last uh, new thing you learned in your life? Except <laughs> maybe the chess-based stuff from Pascal, of course. <laughs> well. I it just I don't that depends on the on the periods like for example uh, I I learned to ride bicycle when I was maybe twenty years old really old before I just did, simply didn't had uh, bicycle interesting then I kind of uh, stopped stop it now I have some f- friends and we are like even going out on the weekends some. Last time we did something like 70 kilometers, <laughs> like right, nice. right, which is was nice. Through and the mountains, of, I assume. Well, it's not huge uh, mountains in Basque country, but still required. Uh, requires A little bit something. of condition. <laughs> I know. Sometimes, um, I don't know, some even like not huge things, but maybe some books, some kind of tips like even i have kids and i'm kind of curious how I can communicate mm. with them but what kind of food what kind of dishes possible like to eat so they also eat a little bit like healthy right? what what the did discount. what do you consider a healthy diet what what are you eating yourself i don't know in general i think you should not limit yourself like to say i don't eat this or that at, mm-hmm. a, at all just to have variety balance it not over eat i guess i guess also it's different <laughs> if you are uh like me 39 years old or my kids who is growing up i don't need so much maybe energy for growing <laughs> i can be taller i can be really more just <laughs> to get some uh, food. the protein and i would that. suggest in general eat uh, local foods local products in this advice, uh, yeah. case you eat it fresh and uh, you also support local <laughs> let's True. say yeah farmers and, absolutely absolutely and, okay here in hamburg like with Pascal, sometimes we go for lunch. He showed me some nice small places that he usually probably goes for the lunch. And they also mm-hmm. like ski. It's it's different, not like in Pascal, but it's you know, it's also nice. I don't need now, for example, to cook, to wash dishes. This True. is also changing a little bit routine. <laughs> uh, tomorrow fly back, but not my like, like. And then the cooking starts again. My kids again. <laughs> Yeah, I can. Uh, Maybe I can, we can cook some like some pizza, homemade pizza. I don't know. Nice. That all sounds very, very <laughs> nice to me. I have to say. Now, um, so you you live in Spain, so you speak Spanish, right? You is mm, well. In Basque country, there is uh, like 
there's a mix. Two languages. Yeah. My kids go to Basque school and there is Basque language. Wow. Which is very, very complicated. Yeah. I know some words. Spanish language. Well, I can communicate. Uh, I can speak, but I'm, I would not say that I'm speak. Well, I need my mother tongue language is Ukrainian and Russian in like English. I want to improve if it's possible. Mm-hmm. But maybe my way of learning languages is just practicing to speak and uh, speak more, not afraid to make mistakes, uh, try to read some books, yeah. to listen music. Well, I can ask sometimes my wife because she's she's really good in language. For example, she's a professional interpreter, translator. She knows uh, okay. Basque, Russian. English, uh, a little bit speaks like French. Oh. Probably she can learn if she was some Italian because it's similar to <laughs> Russian. Well, Ukrainian, she does speak, but she was in U- in Ukraine in Kiev many many years ago. Some words, some words got uh, stuck to there. She she knows. There is a just a little bit off topic, but I just remember Grandmaster Yannick. Pilitia. Yes. From Switzerland, he is. Well, in Switzerland, usually. If you, you speak live, a couple you, of languages, but yeah. I think he knows Russian and even Armenian language. My goodness. And uh, many, many years ago, there was a tournament in Ukraine, in Kharkov. We played there. And he arrived to Kharkov airport, and suddenly he can hear some announcement in the airport. And, and he said, oh my God, I don't understand what they are talking. But then we explained to him that since we are in Ukraine, that all announcement on official Ukrainian language. Of course, people can speak also uh, Russian. So they are similar, but they are a little bit uh, different than if you don't practice Russian <laughs> or whatever, maybe you could be confused. And then, ah, okay, okay. <laughs> He, he, he got away with that. Now, uh, one, there's a, college, a couple of players who also went to Spain or play in Spain or just live in Spain or in close to. There's just uh, Alexei Shirov, which uh, of course comes to mind, who is quite famous that he even uh, played for the Spanish national team. Do you have any contact with him or do you know, do you sometimes meet in Spain or is that not happening? Yeah, it, it's true. It's many players. I think Fabiano Corrado lived in Madrid for, did, okay. for a while. Anand have, have a flat and maybe live near Madrid. In Salamanca, Tapalo, I think oh. uh, still lives. In some moment, I think Spain was such a, a country where you have lots of chess uh, tournaments that go oh, on. You just go from okay. one place to another. And, yes, and yes. This is attractive. Well, nice weather. Nice weather uh, too. Yeah, there's a lot of, of things to uh, love in lots Spain. Lots of like tapas, food, mm. lots of jobs coming. <laughs> <laughs> for this. But where I live, uh, to be honest, uh, the, I would like, for example, Tapalov. It's another. He lives in another region, not so close. Okay. I have more contacts with uh, local uh, chess uh, clubs. For example, this year I played for in Spanish league for chess club from San Sebastian from uh, okay. Gross Gross Hockey, but um, they are not really like professional chess player who who, who like compete. Maybe the strongest one in Basque country, something like two thousand four hundred. Okay, it's not like <laughs> we will compare with Fabian Caron. In, in yeah, with Alexei Shirov, he I think. In he has like a house in Catalonia, which is other part, maybe more than one, something like one hour by f- flight from Bilbao to Barcelona. Then you need to drive a little bit. So somehow don't have so much uh, connection connections. Together. But okay, I have let's say other connections with other people who is maybe not. Chess players, but we also have so far. In general, uh, I recommend like come to Bilbao, really nice, yeah. calm city. Once, many, got many, many years ago, Hena Sasonka just mm-hmm. dropped me a message. 
He told me, oh, I'm, go I'm coming to Bilbao. There is uh, from Amsterdam with uh, uh, his partner, Marietta. Uh, like Sally, it was like good cheap flights, direct flights, mm -hmm. good offer package for the hotel. He just wanted to enjoy it a little bit to see something new. We <laughs> met a little bit like talking for a while. That's nice. And before in, Ch in Bilbao was organized, if you remember, traditional Grand Slam tournament, you know, like Carlson played. Unfortunately, nowadays uh, they don't organize this tournament. Hmm. But I mean, if you, if someone wants to come, we can make <laughs> drop me a message. We can make some plans for you. Go, you heard it here first. Now is the chance. <laughs> maybe drinks. I will show the good bars. Maybe, <laughs> or maybe just I don't do some yoga near uh, on the beach, or maybe just ride the bicycle or cook something. So, yeah, you heard it here. Uh, let uh, Ruslan know. Before that, of course, get his Fritz trainer, right? This is also <laughs> a reason why we're here, obviously. But for now, um, we would like to take a look at one of your favorite games you have played. So for this, we go to the chessboard. So here we are. Ruslan, who did you play against? When was that? Why do you like this game? Uh, well, this game... I like this game because uh, my opponent was very strong, Vasily Ivanchuk. I played many times against him. This is, was FIDE Grand Prix. We played in Greece. Mm -hmm. And it it's not like so often you beat your opponent with some uh, calm, natural moves and so, so quickly. This is... Um, kind of bring me also extra enjoyment like to play such strong opponent true of course yeah that's always something nice so um you were white you yes, say and was white. yeah you played e4 are you an e4 player well i can play e4 d4 anything and when i started just started to play chess i only played e4 but obviously on the high level if you want to improve you should try to learn as many as possible different Good bone structure, uh, different type of position. Mm -hmm. Not just memorize moves like E4, D4, but I would suggest just to have better understanding in general that you will not have got by surprise. Like, let's say you play only E4 at someone, you have some type of position, let's say King's Indian, that could a uh, cool maybe from some Rui Lopez from Stainitz variation mm -hmm. and this also can happen. but okay return back to this game let me show what yeah. happened Ivanchuk obviously can play absolutely any opening he I admire him so much mm -hmm. I played uh, against him and we played together in the Ukrainian national team of course he has lots of influence on us yeah young players he, he's a he's a nice but, guy personally yeah he's a nice guy he uh, knows many things for mm -hmm. example it was amazing for me how he sadly knew that it was is going to be chess olympiad in istanbul in 2000 and sadly one or two years before he started to learn like Turkish language <laughs> for example oh my goodness and, what yeah yeah I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. Everyone is different. I'm a little bit different, but some <laughs> his qualities, some things like can also motivate. But okay, when we play against each other, it's not like we are going to make some friendly draws. No, no, <laughs> always like it's gonna be a fight. And for him, it's also in uh, extra, maybe tension for him because mm. he always considered that he wants to, to be number one in Ukraine. Uh. And I, I have feeling that, for example, in Ukrainian championship, he didn't play so often. Uh, he only, as, as I remember, when I played uh, among all championship, he played only once in uh, Lvov when oh. it was his hometown. Oh, Maybe for him okay. it's not like the most 
good experience. I don't know. Probably. I not. will not enter to his mind. Maybe he's just a busy person and <laughs> never had time to play. It. <laughs> That's but, okay. going to be it. Uh, now he chose the French uh, defense against. Yeah, here. French defense. Actually, we we had many French before. For mm -hmm. example, in 2002, uh, the match in Moscow, uh, when I became uh, world chess champion, first uh, game of this match was French defense. And I we see. played in Linares. First round, he again played French, but he also played against me lots of Sicilians to, or some Rui Lopez. To be honest, statistically, if to check now, probably with Sicilian he was much more successful than with French. But for some reason, he always wanted to yeah. uh, claim, no, I can also play French, but yeah, I, statistically I wonder, it didn't, didn't work for him. So I wonder how often he tried it after this game, but we will, <laughs> we will see. So you, you play D4, of course. D5. Well, normally I I play here knight c3, yeah. but for some reason in that tournament, well, it was 2017. Uh, sometimes I had like influence maybe to play knight d2. This is game for, uh, move from my childhood. I studied mm -hmm. games of Anatoly Karpov, and he exclusively played only knight d2. Then uh, I think when I started to work with Gennady Kuzmin when we prepared for a match against Karchnoy. Knight c3, in general, my feeling, more ambitious move. Okay. Uh, but nowadays, for example, people even return back like old classical e5. This is, I guess, a matter of taste, a matter of ideas. For example, this game that I mentioned in Linares in Moscow, I played knight c3, but this time I played knight d2. Sometimes it's more like psychological, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. battle, because if both sides played perfectly, uh, it's going to be more or less equal position. Okay. Right? Uh, so I think c5 is the most uh, critical move, and that's why I don't like so much knight d2, because after, let's say, e takes d5, queen d5, there is uh, more exchanges. Yeah, the and knight position, is missing. And missing. <laughs> no, not, not like missing, another type of... Sure, of course. Yeah. Position, but after, for example, knight c3, bishop b4, this is more like closet type of position. Mm. And probably uh, Ivan Chuk wanted that I played closed type position, that's why he chose French and I offered like open type of position. Yeah. But then suddenly he insists, no, I want to play <laughs> closed type of position, and he played knight f6, which is possible. Uh, I played maybe once against Shirov and Blitz. Mm -hmm. But it's considerably not the strongest theoretical move, like c5. But okay, now I obviously don't have much choice. E takes d5 is very If dope. you want to keep it open, so yeah. So <laughs> I, need, I need to play uh, oh. normal. So, but okay, now, for example, knight on d7, not very good place it. Don't have many good squares, and obviously the play is here around. I have a strong uh, center. I don't know if I can. I'm sorry. Uh, I do some my nice. Keyboard, my keyboard uh, is a bit messy here. Well, but. I want to just sometimes like to draw nicely. Well, e5 and d4 center, and he's going to attack with c5 mm -hmm. and f6. So, next move was uh, once again it's, it's theory matter of taste. I played f4 c5, uh, knight f3, which is kind of. Not the main line, but I saw this idea in one game of Vladimir Malachov, who is mm -hmm. more like, uh, likes to play closed position. For example, with black, he plays some Chibanenko, Slav line. He's positional player. And I also tried to learn <laughs> from different players. And I said, give it to try. Knight b3. A little bit strange move. So many moves with uh, knight. <laughs> but basically, idea once again here position is closed, and I want to keep my center. Mm -hmm. uh, Vladimir Kapian, I think, played c takes b d4, knight b d4 against me, something like this. But this, this is, was a rapid game in Moscow in some knockout uh, tournament. Mm -hmm. This is another type of position possible, but I was happy. Knight on d4 is also on the good square. I still keep my center, Ivanchuk played c4, move knight bd2, which is principle. It looks like he's winning some tempos. 
Yeah, it's your uh, fourth night move, right? Yeah. yeah, you can see so many moves with night. But if you just count how many pieces developed, all his pieces still, still the, the same, starter. Yeah. I'm also <laughs> the starter, but so I have basically space advantage pawn e5, but mm -hmm. he has some c4. However, I think e5, it's like on the central square and c4 more like on the uh, like bishop, <laughs> bishop like... Uh, line yeah yeah so but still it's lots of play obviously with pawn on c4 he's going to play more on the queen side and with pawn on e5 i'm going to play more on king side both king still not castled uh so he we, we develop pieces this is normally maybe there is some ideas could be some to play queen e5 is idea c3 or maybe here maybe queen e5 c3 but okay this is some nuances theoretical battles we played 2013 maybe now theory changes i wanted just to show his he also played logical knight b6 and this is position what i like it's not like you calculate or something this is about like planning in advance mm -hmm. uh, to outsmart and even like for sometimes engines well uh, they improve a lot but in that moment in 2013 this type of uh, type of close position like how to evaluate who will succeed more on one or another uh, side so i played knight f1 here once again <laughs> another knight move knight, yeah but uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to do some bishop c1 not playing and knight f1 obviously goes to e3 so some money well he also did knight f6 knight d7 knight b6 true yeah so many moves the knights dominate the whole game so and far I don't know, it's difficult to say where Ivanchuk made some mistakes, but uh, from this moment the game lasted just nine more moves. If someone will look at this position, how it's possible? <laughs> yeah. And my opponent is Ivanchuk, Vasily. That is yeah? true, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's also true, maybe he had bad day, maybe he didn't sleep well, or maybe he <laughs> ate something bad, I don't know. Uh, this is also can happen. That can always happen, yeah. So maybe just I was lucky, but still, this is a game to learn. So he played h5. I guess he wanted, he's not planning to castle short because of my opponent e5. Mm -hmm. And h5 maybe for a while stops my active play with g4, I don't know, f5, prophylactics. Uh, the Malachov games, I think, was bishop d7. This was inspiring me to play this line okay. but oh, okay Malachov also one which is always like if you win it gives some positive normally it's a good sign good sign but okay and h5 so knight bishop knight is three bishop b7 castle <laughs> bishop b7 so first more or less like finishing development yeah and once again i think this is was also interesting moment because previous moves, like, uh, as I told, like, E5, I want to play maybe sounds like F5, but he looks like a preparer. Like, now F5 doesn't give me much because he can just take a pawn. On D5 is protected. Like, I don't know, H3, prefer G4, then I need to consider H4, for example. Maybe G3 was possible. Mm. H3, G4, F5. But then maybe in someone he would play like G6. And I open a little bit my king. Well, it's not so dangerous. I, I have much more pieces on this side, all his pieces on another side. I'm not going to mate, but this is like... Plan. And by surprisingly, I played here, actually, move b3 on the side where he looks like stronger. He should uh, play there, but actually play there. And I should admit that in Bilbao, I once I played in maybe 2004, 2003, some tournament, humans versus computers. Oh, okay. Also, Fritz played the junior, played at that moment. <laughs> it still was possible to compete, but of, it's already <laughs> that, the that, <laughs> that moment, computers already were stronger. Yeah. Maybe it was Tapalov, me, maybe Kasemjanov, Karyakin, maybe we were Strong one only just players. one or two games. And uh, computer beats. And I remember uh, Hydra was such engine. Uh, 
and I played some French, a little bit like different, but still he suddenly he played like B3, this idea, and oh. started to play on other side. Like, so you learned this move yeah. by a computer? Yeah, I by mean, an engine. some kind of this kind of idea that actually this is not, I'm, I'm not planning to beat x 4 but also like some kind of put tension on both yeah. sides and like to combine use the whole the whole board and this is more or less like happened in this uh, game okay when you play g6 like in advance he is like over protecting f5 mm -hmm. okay i'm still improving my pieces a6 he probably understood maybe in some way i can play a4 so over protection but the game is lasting another four three four moves yeah. what the heck happened well okay I, I, I mean <laughs> We will see very soon. Oh, still, all crazy. pieces, uh, all pieces on board. Uh, yeah, but I think strategically, for black, it's uh, already difficult to play here. Like the Moles, he did all his useful moves, mm -hmm. and I don't know somehow castle short doesn't make so much sense after you play. Computer, I think, suggested something like castle, bishop h4, bishop b4. But I don't know. I don't believe like this. It's not human move. So keep king in the center. Then how you will use your rooks? Um, and also like question: what what to do? Like, and for human, it's difficult like, just not to do anything and wait. Of course, I would have played. So uh, he played nine out of ten times. I would have played. He played castle, uh, now. castle long yeah. to connect these rooks. And okay, maybe he was not really afraid. Of some attack on the queen side because look he has if you just cut the board in half he had more pieces here yeah my pieces is here it's looking but I actually don't play bishop h4 still I played a4 uh, that's a nice one queen b7 and queen b1 and suddenly all this tension uh, no good somehow defense and okay the last move he blundered he played knight a7 but I don't know, still difficult. Like, basically, my idea maybe to take somehow 8xb5, 8xb5, btxc4. Now I'm actually maybe opening mm. lines, but in the moment that I want. Not, and knight is 7 yeah. was, he was kind of preparing, but this concrete blunder, like a5, uh, also unexpected maybe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gosh. But the he realized knight. that I only this move and tactical take, take. Uh, nice. Winning very important pawn, and he didn't want to suffer anymore oh, after a5. Wow. He reset. What did he say uh, on the other side of the board? Did he congratulate you, or did he shake his well, head? Well, uh, of course, we are all humans. I'm we, when I lose my game, I also feel very, very frustrated. Yeah. But it was round six, and I remember in some moment I saw even he's trying like to. Recover, he tried like huh. not to focus much about previous uh -huh. results. One day I saw him in swimming pool, and <laughs> I think uh, in the end, him in general his tournament was not very great. But mm -hmm. in the end, he managed, for example, to beat Etienne Bakrov with black or something. He's like has strong yeah, character. Well, but okay, this is just a strong player, of course. Yeah, this is psychology. I mean, one tournament we we played this Grand Prix stages. He could win easily himself this turn, but this is was I would say my day. Yeah, I understand completely. Well, Ruslan, that was really really nice. We had a cool interview. I uh, learned a lot about you and what you're doing besides chess, and we have seen the nice chess games. And for you at home, of course, the Fritz trainer is just around the clock, around the bend. Uh, behind the corner. I don't know what else to say about this. I think you should get it. Check it out. And uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for being here. And we see each other soon again. Thank you. Bye-bye.